yourself, grow and love it. Let's go on the beat. Brought to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. And we welcome in our guy, NBC Sports Chicago Bears insider Josh Schrock, who is always himself and is where his feet are. His eyes are forward. This is Matt Eberflus today. I'm going to have a ton of fun with this today. How much do these last two games matter for, for, for Flus? I mean, he's so comfortable right now. Maybe he already knows he's getting a seven-year extension here, Josh. I don't know. Yeah, Carm, honestly, I don't think as far as job security goes, I don't think they matter a whole lot. I think what this Bears team has proven throughout the course of the year, and especially last week against the Cardinals, is they have ultimate buy-in in whatever Matty Rufus is saying. They have not let go of the rope. Uh, I mean, they start 0-4, the D.C. resigns, the running backs coach gets fired. Uh, we had the Chase Claypool saga. They lost Justin for four weeks, and they have continued uh, to fight. They've continued to get better. The defense has been near elite for almost a month so i think as long as the bears avoid catastrophe these last two weeks i think maddie refluce um is safe and i, I felt that way for about a month now j dubs okay catastrophe so if they go six and eleven lose we're gonna have all the nicknames today if they lose by 30 to the packers is that where you're talking c- catastrophe or like let's say they tight game lose to atlanta tight game lose to green bay he still doubled his wins you think he's back in that scenario Yeah, I think so. I think given everything that has happened, I think uh, the stewardship over the defense, you know, the run defense went from 32nd to first. Uh, The pass defense has been really good since it's got healthy. Um, I think you can point to a lot of ways this season could have really gone off the rails. But like you said, if they finish 6-11, you double your win total, um, and you have a case that you probably could have won nine games, I I think it's really hard to let him go, um, especially just given the way that this team has continued to fight and, and not mailed it in when when a lot of teams probably would have, especially after that Browns loss, just been like, okay, one, two, three, Cancun. Uh, we'll see you later. Does that mean in your mind that they've made a decision on the quarterback too? No, no. I mean, I don't think so. I, I think it's a really tough decision. I think, you know, it's going to depend. I've always said it's going to depend where that Panthers pick comes in. And I know it looks really good at one, but if old friend Chris Tabor you know, checks off a couple wins here and, and it falls at two, you know, Justin could stay. Uh, I think it's going to be a long evaluation process. Um, but I, I think in the end with the quarterback, it, it's really hard to pass up the number one pick two years in a row. And if you're Ryan Poles, it's a self-preservation business. And, and the answer is normally what doesn't get me fired. And I think passing on Caleb Williams might get you fired and trading Justin Fields probably doesn't. All right, Jay Minerator, this is a tough one for you here. <laughs> But if you had to guess right now where Fields' mindset yeah. is, d- does he think that he's going to be a bear next year? If You're guessing here. Uh, either either answer is fine. Or do you think he's going to be elsewhere? And by the way, I'm going to follow up on that with your own opinion. But what do you think Fields is thinking right now? Yeah, I think what we've got from Justin all year, but especially this last month, is um, – some perspective on the fact that it it probably isn't going to be your right i think if you pay attention after the cardinals win you know he spent a lot of time out on the field at soldier field he he walked around most of it high-fiving fans uh you know he's talked a lot about finding happiness outside of football and, and not having what happens with this situation dictate um his happiness uh i think he's a very self-aware um guy and i think even though he is continuing to focus on the daily grind and getting better. I think he understands the situation. So I think he probably thinks it's it's going to be elsewhere next year. And, you know, for my two cents, uh, you know, I think the same. And I don't think that says anything bad about Justin. I think Justin's incredibly talented. And I think in any other situation, if the Bears don't have the number one pick, you have a great case of Justin is developing. We have a talented, dynamic young quarterback. The arrow's trending straight up. But... We do have the number one pick. You can reset the quarterback con- contract clock. And, you know, we just need a more dynamic passer. And I think all those things work against Justin. It is going to be one interesting offseason, Jay Future. All right. Injury report. Tevin is back. That's good. Lucas Patrick is questionable with the knee. Cole Komet seems like he's trending towards playing. Darnell Mooney is out with a concussion. With Komet, not 100%, by the way, we'll, we'll, I want to know who you think is going to step in there. But do you think, first off, that Komet's going to play? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, you know, Matty Rufus said it was trending in the right direction. We talked to Cole Atkins in the locker room today. Uh, he has not missed a game yet in his career. He said something that's uh, probably the only individual statistic that actually matters to him is, is availability. And that's something he learned from Jimmy Graham. He said as long as he feels he can execute his job, he'll be out there. So uh, I, I would bet. 
uh, Cole will be out there um, on Sunday. And as far as, you know, pick to click in the pass game uh, with no Darnell and Cole less than 100, um, you know, it's it's going to have to be by committee. But they, they do really like Tyler Scott and they like how he's come along. You know, he's still really young in his in his wide receiver life. He was a running back in high school. He's still learning, um, you know, how to be a better route runner. But they they love the development. So I think you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, plays for Tyler. And I think Bayless Jones. They're going to scheme up some things for him. They, they've kind of liked the way they've used him the past couple weeks and then expect some, a lot of three tight end sets. You know, maybe Big Dog gets in the end zone again and Matty Rufus can bark at him. Does it bother you as much as it kind of irks me that Tyler Scott's out there blocking as much as he is? Same thing with Darnell Mooney. The guy's like, I mean, he's he 170 pounds. Go, go block a guy twice your size. It seems absurd. I don't know. I talked to Ty Tolbert actually about that yesterday, and he said that uh, the thing that they like about Tyler is that he he loves blocking. He loves blocking safeties and linebackers. I don't know if that's the best, you know, things schematically, Carm, I think is what you're pointing to. Uh, but as long as they're willing to give their effort and, and they're pretty good at it, um, I'm okay with it. But we can get into the schematics, uh, you know, maybe next time. Okay. I mean, I, I get that he loves it and he's a great teammate, but just, again, doesn't seem like the best use of his talents. All right, let's go to the fun part of this. Uh, if you missed it, and why we're giving Josh nicknames, it's because Matt Eberflus, he was mic'd up last Sunday, and they captured him using some creative nicknames for literally everyone. Take, take a listen right here. Dragon Slayer. Ooh. Here he is, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, Mako. Let's go, man. Let's go. How'd you come up with so many nicknames for all the players? There's a video going around of, of you po of pregame, and yeah. you've got a nickname for counted 17. Are those on the fly, or do you? Sorry, I got nicknames for you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> by, by all means. I'm giving you a nickname. Who? Flues? Uh, yeah, but mine's, he didn't give it to me. I, I, I was one of the originals. It was from Notre Dame. They call a buddy of mine, uh, thought my name was pronounced Comet, not Comet. So then he just thought that was funny because it was pissing me off one day. So now he calls me Comet all the time. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is fun blues. That is like, I, this is, this is fantastic. You, does he, you think he has one for you? What, what's his nickname for Shrock at all here? I'm fascinated. Man, that's a good question. Uh, I'd love to know. Maybe we'll get it out of him next week. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Duck. I'm gonna go with the Duck. <laughs> okay. I'm go with the Duck. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, I wonder. Jason Leisure's got to have a nickname. He's got to have one for oh, Big. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Biggs. Yeah, I, I, I mean. I mean, I'm there on Fridays. Flus. We we bonded. I hope he has got got something for me. That, that would be sweet, right? He's got. He's got to love the Carm. This is, this is a Matt Eber Flus. I think though that we all are enjoying seeing I'm enjoying seeing it I'm like, enjoying like it. you know he's, he's so straight but okay there's some personality here I think it speaks well for what he's done in that locker room yeah there's there's no there's no question he has been I think probably since the first Lions game even though they lost he's been a lot looser I think he's very confident in what this team is doing on the field and the progress it's making and you can see you know you remember the uh, what's up your sleeve well what's up yours comment after the Panthers game he's just uh he, he's in a good he's in a good space and I think you can uh, maybe connect some dots and, and, and get the sense that uh, Matt Eberflus feels uh, pretty confident he's going to be back here in 2024. Maybe Leisure's name is Sleeves for Flus. It, do, do, do you think there's anything to the Bears putting that video out? Like they could, they didn't have to mic up Matt Eberflus. They could have mic'd up anyone. They mic'd up the Flus. If you're moving on from the Flus, why would you mic him up? No, yeah, I think that's that's probably a, that's probably a safe connection to make, right? If you plan on letting go of this guy, you're not going to broadcast, uh, you know, all the nicknames he has for his players and get his personality out there. And uh, you know, I talked to Jalen Johnson today about the Dragon Slayer nickname, and uh, he said he he isn't really sure wh where it came from, but one day Matt Eberflus just walked up to him and said, "Hey, today you're the Dragon Slayer," and and it stuck. And Jalen said he's he's good with it. He hopes it means that it means he takes out the number one receiver, uh, but he's not really sure the backstory. J Dub. Jay Prognosticator, appreciate you. <laughs> Had a lot of fun today. Thanks for being here. Hey, you're the man, Carl.